You are listening to the Boss Experience Podcast, a podcast with conversations about business growth, self-development, and maintaining a mindset to achieve business success. My name is Michelle Davis, and I am a business strategist and coach, and I am your host. Let's get started. Welcome to the Boss Experience Podcast. My name is Michelle Davis, and I'm your host. So I'm sharing some bonus content with you in the form of a previous interview. Enjoy the episode. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I am your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because we're going to be talking about how to live your fulfilled potential. And so I want to introduce my guest, Ms. Michelle Davis. Welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's a pleasure to have you on. You are a fellow podcaster. That's how we connected. So I'm looking forward to hearing your story. But first, before we dive into it, please tell a little bit about who you are and what you do. And and we'll dive into the conversation after that. Sure. My name is Michelle Davis. I'm host of the Boss Experience podcast, and that's spelled D-A, in case you want to look for it on your favorite podcast platform. I am also a business coach and strategist, but I wasn't always a fabulous business coach and strategist. In a previous life, I actually spent, you know, 20 plus years in nonprofit services. So I've worked with so many different populations, everyone from the formerly incarcerated to domestic violence survivors, to sexual assault survivors, to chronically ill individuals. Probably the last 16 years of my career, what I did was I developed programs. So I've not only developed programs, but I've flipped organizations around in terms of, you know, if it was a toxic work environment, I would come in as a program director and I would reverse it, you know, through a series of steps. I also implemented a trauma-informed program model for a domestic violence shelter that I ended up running for about six, seven years. But the bulk of my work was developing, you know, these robust programs, number one, that would get funded by the government or foundations. But number two, that were impactful for the clients. Right, right. Sounds amazing. Like, I mean, you know, when you said you had all the years of experience in the nonprofit space, was it hard to transition into doing your own entrepreneur work? Were there some great lessons that you've learned from the nonprofit space as you were converting? I mean, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think part of my nonprofit journey that I absolutely loved, but And I think toward the end, when I made the leap to entrepreneurship, I had landed in like one too many toxic work environments. And so I was thrust (laughs) into entrepreneurship. But one of the things I didn't do in the time while I was actually working, I never took the time to think, you know, what do I like? What do I not like? What's, you know, what interests me? What do I like outside of this, this career? And so I focused a lot on my career, on my career. I was what you would call a workaholic. You know, I had a, a child that kind of changed that like later in, in, in years. But before my having my daughter, I, I enjoyed working to like seven at night. That was like therapy for me. But in the interim, I never really tapped into me. And it wasn't until I was in this one work environment where I was feeling like, oh my God, this is not, (laughs) this is is crazy. They're they're not setting me up for success. In fact, it was downright toxic and nasty. And I said, you know, I remember sitting in my living room and I said, you know, I, you know, I walked off my job that day, by the way, because it was like one of those things where I didn't know what I was going to do. And, but it was also one of those things where something had happened so bad and so egregious that either I walk out with my dignity or I sit here and be somebody's fool. (laughs) And it was just on another level type of thing. And it was directed to me. And so I was just like, I I think I'm going to walk out of here with my dignity. But then when I came home, I sat on my couch. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do (laughs) because I got to get a job. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode and you know you're ready to take that next step to finally become a professional service provider on your own terms, 
I want you to consider working with me. When you work with me, I help you start your business the right way from the beginning so you can generate the revenue you desire doing what you love. So head over to ceoblueprintacademy.com. That's ceoblueprintacademy.com to check out the ways you can work with me to get set up for business success right from the start. That's ceoblueprintacademy.com. Okay, back to the show. And I tried to get a job, but you know, whether it's, it was an age thing or whatever the case, because I was over, over 40 at this time, I don't know what it was, but I couldn't find a job to save my life despite my, you know, extensive work history, despite my master's degree and the countless interviews, I just didn't land anything. So I decided one day sitting on my couch, I said, I'm going to start a business. And I didn't know where that came from. I had no idea what that meant because I didn't know any, I didn't personally know any entrepreneurs. There were no entrepreneurs in my family. And I decided I was going to start a business and it wasn't about the business. It was about what that business would offer me um, as a human being, as an individual. And that was freedom and flexibility, but also to be in charge of my own, own path. And over the course of all that time I was in nonprofit, I was in management. And my highest level position was associate vice president. And in that role, I was given the title, but never like the the go ahead to carry out my own vision. And it was like, you know, I have this title, you know, but what is my vision? Like, what do I want to do? And so I felt like I needed to figure that out. And so, you know, in the course of starting a business or making this big transition from career to, you know, nonprofit career to entrepreneur, I had to fall on my face a few times because I really wasn't clear on what made me happy. I really, I also wasn't clear on who I was as a person. I didn't learn those things until I began to ask myself that, that question, because think about it. I'm coming off of this long career. I am whatever my last job title was. That's who I am. I didn't, I didn't know how to be anything else. And so uh, when I didn't have that anymore, I felt like I was without an identity and that was, it was a very weird feeling because I was in my forties and I felt like I did not have an identity. I didn't know who I was, what I liked, what I enjoyed. And so I had to go through this process of discovering what I was passionate about and what I enjoyed doing. I I was never one for hobbies. (laughs) And so it was just an interesting time. So I went through this process of trying to kind of discover who I was. And the first thing I had to do was be honest that Mm -hmm. I had no idea that there was a problem because I think we can know something's wrong and we can just go with the flow and forget, (laughs) (laughs) you know, that we got this problem we need to to solve. If I'm going to go into business, I need to know who I am. What do I want? I didn't want to create another job for myself. And I felt like my entire life, I had been like this little robot, like, eh, 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 eh. you know, I would go, <laughs> I went to college, I got the bachelor's degree, I got the master's degree, I did all these things, I did everything I was supposed to. And here, yeah, here I am, jobless, right? And like I said, it was one of those things that you walk out with your dignity, or you be there and be someone's fool. And it was just a nasty situation. So first of all, you have to be honest that you don't know who you are. You have no idea who you are. Then you need to set forth on a plan to get clarity Mm. on what your path is. Because as you're discovering your purpose, your passion, whether you're coming out of a marriage, which, you know, I wasn't too long out uh, out of a divorce. So I was coming away from that identity as well that I had never really actually dealt with. So the first point, like I said, be honest, know that there's a problem. And reflect how you're impacted would be my second point. You know, how is this whole thing impacting me? You know, am I, you know, depressed? Am I like enthusiastic about finding my passion? Like, am, am I sad about the things that I'm leaving behind? Because it's not an easy transition to go from a career into, you know, whatever this life that I sat and thought of <laughs> on my couch, right? That's not easy. So I need to talk about how I'm impacted. I was scared for one. I was terrified (laughs) because I had had a daughter I had to support and I had no idea where my income was going to come from. So, you know, you got to identify that, you know, what are you feeling? I was scared. I was hopeful, but I was also 
you know, there was an inkling of doubt too. Like, girl, you're going to, you can fall flat on your face doing this. <laughs> right. so, but the point is, is that you need to reflect about what you're feeling, how you're feeling it and, and how it's impacting you, how it's impacting your family. If you have children that are old enough to understand what's happening, because you don't want to bring fear upon them either thinking mommy doesn't have a job or we're going to be homeless. You know what I'm saying? Like you start putting too much out there. You'll create fears in your, in your children or in your spouse or partner. Right. So, and then the other thing is you got to figure out what it is you need to do. So this would be the third point. Think about what this new life looks like and what you need to do to get it started. Right. So the, and so by doing that, you need to think, well, am I doing something new or am I tapping into a skill I already have? Right, right. Um, one big mistake I did was I went in internet land, you know, and I got lost. <laughs> right, right, right. And I felt like I needed to learn something new. Right. To do something I love. So essentially, I was starting my business backwards. Right. Because, I, I, yeah. I, I, I love what you're going with it. And I want to take a moment to say that Michelle has been dropping nuggets since she started talking about her journey you know she's dropping some gems so you know michelle please you know continue your story because like like you said you talk about being honesty and reflecting on um how you're showing up and processing your um emotions and communicating so you were about to share what was your biggest you said your biggest mistake was was looking outside to try and figure out what i enjoy doing instead of just asking myself like really going deep you know whether it's through you know, some type of meditation, whether it's through journaling, get really getting in tune with who I was. I, I didn't do that until later. And so I initially started off looking outside of myself to figure out what made what I was passionate about. That That's a process that takes place inwardly. And so um, I allowed myself to get lost in social media land. And so, you know, I ended up like going in different directions. Some of them, a lot of them, were the directions I was heading in were in the wrong, <laughs> just in the wrong path. So once I kind of said, okay, so, you know, here I'm coming with all this experience and education. And when I say education, I'm not talking about just college. I'm talking about life experience. As individuals, especially as you age, you're coming with robust experience in life, in, in just everything, your, your workplace, what skills do you actually have? You don't need to look outside unless you want to desperately do something new, of course, but you don't need to look outside. So I spent, I wasted a lot of time looking outward instead of looking inward. But once I did, I was able to kind of dissect what skills I had, you know, here I was, I was a manager for, you know, 16 years. I knew program development and that's how I kind of transitioned into helping professional service providers create their signature coaching program. I've been creating programs for over almost two decades. So why would I not tap into my experience? The other thing I had to do as, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, what work do I need to do? What training do I need? Do I need to get coaching? Do I need to take this course? Because once you tap into your skills, how do you adapt it to what you're doing now? You know, Mm -hmm. this new life you're creating. So you may need to develop some additional skills for that. And then the other thing is you want to allow yourself to dream without boundaries. So as you're discovering your passion, you want to do it unfiltered. You know, think about everything you enjoy doing. What makes you happy? What has put a smile on your face throughout the years? And so you want to capture that in a journal and you want to write it down so that you can always go and reflect on that. And so... I I did that. And that's the fourth point. Give yourself permission to be bold. Give yourself permission to dream. And my fifth point is get support. Don't dis- enlist on discovering your passion alone. If you have family, if you have kids, you know, a partner, you know, your mom, whomever is in your life, get support in this new journey. Not validation, but support. Because sometimes we look to people, you know, to validate what we're doing. And if your dreams are too big and they don't see your vision, they could end up shooting that vision down. They could end up, you you know, making you feel like you're crazy and and you're going to pull away. You're not going to pursue your passion. Figure out who's supportive. Not everybody in your life is supportive. And you know exactly who they are. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know exactly which friends you 
don't tell your dreams to. You know exactly which family members you need to stay away from. But look at, look at your life and see who you can get support from. And if you don't have anyone in your life that's supportive, find people that have a common vision for what it is you want to do. For me, it was starting a business. For someone else, it may be something else. But I had to get in the room with people that shared my passion so that I could find, you know, mentors, I could find partners. And I say partners, not love interests, but partners in this new venture I was going into. Right, right. That was my process for discovering my passion. And in it, I realized that, you know, I had been selling myself short. I wasn't allowing myself to, to dream or do anything outside of my career. Right. And that's not fulfilling for anyone. Right. Yeah. So like I said, I, thank you for sharing your process because it's like, there's a lot of things I cannot, I cannot relate to the, um, I always say the word compartmentalizing your skills because that's we don't, I don't think we, <laughs> I don't, we, we never take enough inventory lists of our, our, our own skills. So thank you for bringing that up. And we could always continue this conversation. So I haven't even got to the, my unofficial question yet, but that's my unofficial question. You can maybe come back and we can dive a little bit more into this stuff. Because I think you you got some really great process that a lot of people, like I said, didn't really or, you know, don't take inventory enough of them, their skills. And I think that's something to really be, as you say, fulfill your potential. Your potential means within you. I think that was a really key point that a lot of people are not paying attention to. So, Michelle, you've been dropping nuggets. What's the one thing you want people to take away from your interview today? If they don't hear anything else, what's the one thing you want them to take away today? That God did not bring you to this world to be average. God brought you to this world to be happy and fulfilled and to live your life's passion. So you got to take action on that. Beautiful, beautiful. Did you know that more than half of Americans have listened to a podcast episode at least once? So if you have a product or service that needs to reach an online audience, advertising on a podcast like The Boss Experience is a great way to get in front of your ideal customer. When you secure an advertising slot on an episode, the Boss Experience podcast listeners get to hear about your business every time someone tunes into that episode. So what are you waiting for? Visit bit.ly forward slash podcast episode sponsor to get started. Now back to the episode. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you got tons of value from this episode. And I can't wait for you to join me in the next episode of the Boss Experience Podcast. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to the Boss Experience Podcast. Don't forget to leave a review for this episode and tune in next time.